Hey, what's up? I'm Sheila Matthews. And I'm Martin Z. Johnson. And welcome to your favorite internet show, Logged In. We have some things to talk about this week. We're getting into Twitter things, Rihanna, and more. But first, we have to start off with some very sad news. Iconic rapper and member of Migos Takeoff was unfortunately killed on November 1st. He was only 28 years old. Yeah, and the thing that kind of took me back a little bit was the fact that he's just 28. He's three years removed from being able to rent a car. It just shows you kind of the finality of death in that just yesterday, he was having a time in his life at a bowling alley, and now his life is over, and you know, the people around him kind of had to pick up those pieces. Yeah, and it's just really sad too, the timing. This is two weeks shy of us losing Young Dolph last year too, and black men deserve to grow old and to live their lives and to die when it's their natural time, not just out enjoying life as all of them were doing. I mean, he was bowling with Quavo shooting dice. He had, I assume, big plans for the rest of his life and like now that's just cut short. And you know, the natural inclination is to find blame here. At the end of the day, I think there's one commonality with all these, whether it's Young Dolph, whether it's Pop Smoke, whether it's Nipsey Hussle, whether it's the list goes on and on and on it's gun violence, right? And like without guns being there, you don't have any of these people dead. You know, they usually say in these instances, now's not the time to talk about politics or this, but like, nah, man, like guns are the problem and takeoff will be alive right now, but for the presence of guns. So Twitter users, just like us, were shocked to hear about this beloved artist passing and this is what they had to say about it. So from our own David Dennis Jr., we are watching a whole generation of rappers get snuffed out in real time, especially in Atlanta. A whole movement of rappers are either dead or in jail at this very moment. There's no denying the facts there. Um, I would add to that that it's just a whole host of people. Um, obviously we're talking about takeoff, so it's about rappers, but again, it goes back to guns where the presence of guns means people are likely to die. Yeah, this next tweet, takeoff man, Offset lost a brother he'll never get to fix things with for nothing. Quavo lost his nephew, for nothing. Rap lost a good one, for nothing. All this bloodshed, for nothing. It'll never make sense, never ever. Rest in peace, prayers to the family of the fallen. I think too, with my age and getting introduced to rap, my first thoughts were Biggie and Pop, and those were two rappers who were murdered at a very young age. So I don't wanna say it's become normalized, but. Thinking of rap and rappers, unfortunately, this is far too common for a lot of people who that was our first introduction into rap music. Right. This next tweet says, this one is hitting hard, just like Dolph, because when we talk about music that defined a lot of our college era, Takeoff is very much in that conversation. Yes. I was not in college uh, when uh, Migos were, were blowing up, but Fight Night is, you know, one of my favorite songs of theirs. That was my introduction to them. Um, I heard it at a music festival for the first time three years ago. Um, and it, it was like a church moment, like coming to Jesus type moment. Uh, it's just an amazing song. So again, I was not in college at that point, but same. Yeah, yeah same. I mean, for a lot of us who were in college, he's a year older than me. So it's like our same age demographic. So it's all just really scary, but prayers to his family, his fans, his friends, um, and everyone who is grieving the loss of Takeoff. So now we're going to switch gears and go into something a little less somber. Uh, we recently learned that billionaire Elon Musk's deal to purchase Twitter finally went through and he's making big, big changes. So from my view, folks are not really here for this, specifically Black Twitter. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing to come out of this is that uh, Musk and Twitter are considering uh, having verified users pay $20 a month to keep their badge as a way, I guess, to get a little profit going for the social media giant after he bought it for $44 billion, to which I say that is broke boy behavior uh, to ask people to pay for something, one, that's just been free this entire time, uh, but two, just to have a verified badge, which that's not even the intended purpose of the badge itself. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's right to charge for these verification badges, but honestly, half these people with these blue checks didn't pay for theirs. I didn't pay for mine uh, <laughs> back when I had one. Uh, that's just the benefits of working at ESPN right there. Uh, but, you know, just the larger point of, of Elon buying this thing um, and people who maybe cheer him on for this, 
Look, he just spent $44 billion on something two months ago he did not even want and was about to go to court for. Mind you, he said there's a bot problem, which he didn't address before he bought this thing. And now he's asking people for $20 to make up that fact. Not to mention, I'm sorry, also he tanked the stock of Tesla in the process, so. Oh, and in, you know, how he treated his workers of Tesla. I wonder if the same is gonna be happening at Twitter. If people have jobs at that. All right, well, we'll see what Elon does. But one thing I can say Twitter was talking about is the return of Rihanna. She is back after six years with a new release, a single for Wakanda Forever called Lift Me Up, and fans are going crazy over it. You think she's gonna go two for two with Born Again? Uh, she would have to have gone one for one uh, to make it two for two. It's all right. What? It's, it's all right. It's an I right song. It's, it's not good, it's not bad. It's, it's just all right. As a tribute to Chadwick Boseman, check, it, it does that. Though I would argue Tim's cover of Bob Marley's No Woman No Cry was a bit better than that, but it's okay. And again, I think there are some people who will just root for this just because it's Rihanna, of course. And I, and I don't, I don't see any problem with that, but I think we can all admit when mid is mid and like, this is pretty mid, it's fine. I thought it was good personally, but I'm always gonna stay in Rihanna, but you said something interesting. There you go. <laughs> about Thames, and we can clearly hear her influence and she also helped write the song. So do you think we're gonna see a little Island Gal collab soon? One would hope so. Yeah. Uh, I'm a brand new fan of Thames. Sorry for people who discovered her many years ago. I just found out about her last month. She's great, I yeah, like her. She's yeah. amazing, yeah. she's amazing. And she recorded that first album like literally in a closet type of area. She, she just loved Thames. I don't know how long we'll be saying this, but let's see what the Twitter streets are saying about our girl Riri. First tweet, didn't realize how much I missed hearing Rihanna's voice and new music from her until it all hit me when I pressed play on Lift Me Up. That it's, hum, yeah. that hum did what it needed to do. The singing is good. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty good song. Yeah, in context too, it makes it better. Yeah. Next tweet, I knew Heavy and Kid was too expensive when I realized Rihanna had to go back to work too. Oh, you know, kid tweets are, are, are my bag. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're expensive. Diapers are over $50 now. You remember we were talking about this over the summer. Uh, you know, milk is more expensive, applesauce is more expensive. So I understand even for a supposed billionaire that, you know, it, it's too expensive out here to be taking care of kids. Don't do my girl and say supposed. She is a billionaire. According to Forbes. All right, next tweet. <laughs> it's so clear that Thames helped write Lift Me Up because Rihanna sounded like her on the song. She yeah. did, you could hear the influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, like, you know when like, someone writes something for Dr. Dre and he sounds just like the person who wrote it for him? Yeah. Just like that. I love it, I mean, hopefully we do see a collab. It would only be right and the streets would eat it up. Super Bowl appearance? Maybe so. All right, Martinzi. Well, this next segment is near and dear to my heart, okay? Martinzi, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you drink Taylor Port? I didn't know what Taylor Port was uh, until a week ago, so no, I've never, I'm not even sure, is it a wine? Is it a mixed drink? I don't know what it is. Allegedly, it is like a dessert wine or something, a port. I don't know. For me, she heard all my friends in college, we called it Great Penny. It did what it needed to do. It was like $12, you could get half a gallon, and it, it just tasted like you've gone eight shots with one cup. It was great, it was wonderful. And for the first time, I think I'm actually feeling old because TikTok has now discovered this. And you know TikTok is always discovering new trends, both new and old, and making them feel very new. And yeah. they're on to the Taylor Port. So everyone's been drinking it, and now, of course, naturally, everyone has something to say about it. I have something to say about Let's it. Let's go. go these tweets. Uh, I saw my first introduction to Taylor Port was someone mixing Taylor Port with Hennessy and Casamigos. And this is just a long line of people on the internet telling me to drink stuff, and I actually drink it, and it's absolutely disgusting. So that's why I'm not gonna get caught up in Taylor Port because just in the last year, people have told me to drink Casamigos Coffee. and Casa Migos, uh, and Simply Spike Lemonade, and both are absolutely disgusting, so I'm not taking any more advice from the internet. Have you tried cut water? No, I don't know what that is either. Cut water, it's like this water slash drink. I don't really know what it is, but every can is 13% alcohol, so it gets the job done. I just like plain water, you know. Well, what's the trend that you hope TikTok doesn't find? Uh, don't try and bring back ENJ, AKA Irk and Jerk. Don't try and bring back Thug Passion, which is Alizé and Cristal. Don't try to bring back The Incredible Hulk, which is Hennessy and Hypnotic. Uh, just That's anything. That's not too bad. It's not good. Like, if you want to black out, but like, I'm 33, ain't nobody trying to black out no more. 
act. I'm like, I'm what, 27. Things aren't moving like they used to now after a weekend out. So let's see what the internet had to say about Taylorport. His first tweet says, Taylorport gonna be $30 by New Year's if y'all don't shut the F up. Thank you, please y'all. The $12 great penny has been getting the job done for college students across America for a very long time. Don't, don't let inflation hit this. They saying $30 like that's expensive. For a college student it is. College students shouldn't be, okay, never mind. Just move on to of age college students. That's that's the disclaimer for legal, right? <laughs> Next tweet, Taylor Port just a four local with Chelsea boots. That's a fact. When you just said it was twelve dollars and it got the job done, that takes me back. Now I was in college for four loco and I had the original recipe before they changed it. The dangerous um, one, right? Yeah, and I drank only half of a can and the next morning I was still uh Throwing that right back up. So. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you never did. You ever? Have, I wasn't. I wasn't of age. Yeah, yeah good for you. Out. Well, if you had Taylor Port, then it's the equivalent. Oh, there we go. The next tweet says, "My timeline went from drinking 1942 to Taylor Port in 18 months. Recessions is here. Period. And them stimulus checks and PP loans must have run out. Cause that's all I was seeing. I didn't have 1942 either. Is this worth oh. the $200 price point? Absolutely, it's my favorite tequila. Well, one of my favorite tequilas. There's, there's better tequilas, but it's like the aesthetic, you know, like you're in the club. But... So it's stuck. It's aesthetically, yeah, of course it is. That ain't the reason to pay $200 for some alcohol. Boo, you That's sound like a me. dad, Martinzi. I am one. <laughs> Well, over the Halloween weekend, Meek Mill dropped a snippet to his remix of Ice Spice's Munch, and the internet has a lot of mixed feelings about it. The 19 second clip had people missing the old Meek. So, is the snippet actually bad, or are fans just giving Meek a hard time? At this point, Meek Mill has lost the benefit of the doubt, so <laughs> he, it could be good or bad. It's, the internet's just gonna call it trash. Uh, 19 seconds is too short for me to come up with an opinion, but I will say it does feel like the 15 minutes of Ice Spice and Munch are up, so I'm not exactly sure why he's doing a remix now. Meek is traditionally a little bit late sometimes on his freestyles. He's slow is what you're saying. Late. Okay. But I mean, the first few seconds to me, it was, you know, he's not, it's corny wordplay, it fit Meek, but it was, it was the, the sh have you seen the memes that have come from that? I haven't. Yeah, it, it was the little shh that he ends the video with. It was just, okay, well, let's see what Twitter has to say. Maybe they'll agree with us. Okay, so the first tweet says, Meek Mill previewed so many fire snippets on Instagram that never came out throughout his career, but he wanted to drop the remix to Munch. That's fair. Yeah, that's, that's, that's 2022 Meek Mill for you. Next tweet, Meek Mill's Munch remix is the funniest thing I've heard in a minute. That, come on, y'all. It was, it was, okay. Again, this is, I don't know if this is an actual opinion of Rap Talk SK, or he just like jumping on 2022 Meek Mill. Like it's just, it's the thing to do. It's the pylon. I, I still think it was. It's low hanging fruit. I myself have picked it, but like, you know. <laughs> well, the next week says Meek Mill did a Munch remix. LOL, damn, the rap game really in hell. Okay, okay. Cause it, it was other songs he could have chosen that would fit the Meek Mill image. I mean, that is, I mean, she, she has something here and I'm not exactly sure if Baltimore Bam, uh, Bambi here um, is speaking about this, but at this point, the only way to truly be successful and make the most money is to do stuff that goes viral. So Meek might just be doing that. Like TikTok songs, we, we talked about this. Yeah. Like people only know the first 15 seconds of a song, hence why this was only 19 seconds. It's a good play. I mean, if it works, it works, but she ain't wrong. Well, I guess we learned the internet is not here for Meek Mill's Munch remix. And we've also learned that Martinzi is the handle police. So check y'all's handles next time you tweet at us. Well, all right, Martinzi, it's been a pleasure as always. Tell the people where they can find you online. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at 10Z Johnson and on Instagram at Martinzi J. And you can find me on Instagram at toldby.she and on Twitter at toldbyshe. And remember, follow us on all platforms at Anscape. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let us know in the comments what we should talk about on the next show. Bye, everybody.